and uh, I've been working on wind farm layout optimization and uh, building up a tool uh, to model uh, offshore wind farms uh, in the past and now I'm for my master's project here and at uh, HVL um, in um, again working together uh, with the guys here at HVL and the uh, TU Braunschweig in Germany um, but yeah let me uh, get started on uh, what I've been doing back in Germany uh, first um, first, let me start with the motivation. Why is this important? Uh, what, uh, what I or many people are working on, on performance increasing the optimization of offshore wind farms. So in Germany, there is a planned expansion of offshore wind power by 61% by 2030. This is the new goal set by the government. Unfortunately, there are huge power losses due to wake effects within wind farms. Uh, those wake effects can be modeled analytically uh, in a steady state, which is way more uh, com um, computationally uh, uh, viable than uh, than CFD studies, which takes a lot of uh, computation time and resources. Wind farms can be then um, also optimized with respect to their turbine turbine wakes, for example, by optimizing the turbine positioning and uh, innovative control concepts such, such as steering the wake out of uh, out of the downstream turbines by yawing the rotor of, of, of an upstream turbine. So the main question of the research work is how can wind farm performance be increased through optimized turbine positions and yawing this? What can you expect in the next 20 minutes? I will try to get uh, at to get uh, all of us on one page since there are a few people uh, in the room who are not uh, not really in uh, within uh, wind research we'll talk a little bit about wake effects within wind farms and how we can analytically model them um, then i will uh, validate the tool i built uh, or show you the validation of this proposed tool and give you a, a short insight into a parameter study i conducted and last but not least, of course, talk about the optim optimizing a wind farm with respect to layout and uh, the turbine yaws angles. Let us get started with the wake effects. There are uh, those power losses within within a wind farm. And um, as you can see in the graphic on the upper left corner, this is the power um, of one row um, uh, of a, uh, within the wind farm. Um, normalized to the power of the first turbine um, of two uh, two wind farms. The black dots indicate uh, measurements uh, from the wind farm Nystad, which is located in the Baltic Sea, and the gray dots are um, measurements from the Hornsurf One wind farm, which is located just at the Danish shore um, of uh, in the Northern Sea. Those are measurements conducted by Barthelmi. And what we can see here, you have a huge performance drop from the first to the second turbine. Um, when the wakes are overlapping themselves, as you can, uh, as is, is indicated schematically on the right-hand side graphic. Subsequently, you have an asymptotic course of the, the power drop, and um, so the overlapping of several several wakes hardly leads to any further losses. So what we want to do is the, uh, to de decrease or reduce this first drop in performance in order to raise the, the, the power of the whole wind farm. How can we do that? Well, first of all, this is the state um, as it is uh, right now. Then we can, on the one hand, change the layout by moving a turbine out of the upstreams, uh, upstream turbine's wake, or we can uh, steer the yaw by turning the rotor and deflecting the wake of an upstream turbine to not, uh, to not face the rotor of a downstream turbine. How can we model those wake effects? Well, there are numerous models uh, you can use. Um, um, many of you may know the Janssen model, which is uh, um, which is very common, commonly used. I used the wake model by Ishihara and Kian, as they proposed it in 2018. They use the input of some ambient and turbine data. The most important ones are the thrust coefficient of the turbine, uh, turbine since this is the determining parameter for the um, um, main determining parameter for the for the wake behind the turbine, and the ambient data of uh, inflow wind speed and inflow uh, turbulence intensity. Then, by using the model, we model. Uh, the speed deficit and the turbulence growth in the wake region indicated here by this uh, green um, green region behind the turbine. 
I built this uh, in this, I integrated this model in MATLAB. And um, so I had to discriticize or I discriticized the, um, the area behind the turbine. So um, the, with the aid of the model, one can ca compute the speed deficit turbulence growth behind the turbine at uh, designated spots in uh, um, actual and uh, lateral spacing. Uh, behind the turbine. Then you need to use a super, super, uh, superimposing rule in order to take into account how several wakes are overlapping and, uh, uh, and working together. Now that this tool uh, is built, there and validation needs to be done for this, uh, for this reason, uh, um, or for this, the uh, reference plant is used. This reference plant is, uh, in my case, Hornstrip 1. As you can see on the left side, this is a top view of this plant. And uh, on the right hand side, you see the uh, schematical layout with the turbine positions and the main wind directions. Uh, this wind farm is, has extensive performance data and comparative studies available to the public. So that's uh, um, a quite good approach to use this wind farm for validation, for validation purposes. Um, then let's uh, look us now on the validation graph. On the right hand side, uh, top corner, you see again um, a quite similar graph uh, we've seen already. This is the power um, of one wind, row, uh, wind farm row um, um, put in, 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 into, into my graphical output. And uh, the black dots indicate the measurements by Barthelmy, as you've seen already. And uh, the first model uh, is the, um, the purple. The purple line indicates the model by Katik et al., widely known as the, the Jensen model. And this one is integrated in WASP, which is a planning software for wind turbines, uh, um, which is used as an industrial standard um, and comes from DTU. Mm. This model under predicts the power uh, power losses by far, since it's not taking turbulence intensities into account. And not um, um, what I mean with that is rotor added turbulence um, within the wind farm. You can see that the green and the red line meet the measurements uh, way better. Well, uh, since they take this uh, rotor added turbulence into account, while they're still our deviation be between my model and the initial uh, implementation of Kian and Ishihara. And this is due to some uh, simplifications I made in order to make the tool more flexible, adjustable to many cases, and uh, also make it uh, computationally faster. Now that it is validated, let's have a look on the uh, most important parameters uh, which influence the, uh, the, turbine, uh, the, the wind farm power. On the right-hand side, you see a schematic illustration of a small wind farm with, uh, with nine turbines and four, um, four important uh, parameters which can influence uh, the um, wind farm's power. For a fixed inflow velocity of 11.4 meters per second, we can see that uh, by increasing the actual spacing indicated here with the delta x, um, on uh, well, by increasing the actual spacing, you can see an increase in total plant power, um, a significant increase in total plant power. With an increasing inf uh, inflow turbulence intensity, we also see this uh, uh, total uh, increase in total plant power. And this is reasonable since the wake recovers behind the turbine uh, with spacing behind the turbine. So the farther, uh, uh, the, the more um, spacing the uh, wake gets in order to recover um, recover itself uh, before meeting the downstream turbine, the more power output the whole plant generates. On the one hand side, on the other hand uh, side, the turbulence intensity, the turbulence in the free, free stream um, aids the wake recovery process uh, through, uh, through mixing processes of the, um, of the wake region and the free stream. Uh, free stream around, around the wake. So what conclusions can we draw from that with respect to layout optimization? First of all, we talked about that we want to avoid this first shadowing, this first initial drop from first to second turbine on the one hand. By moving the turbines from the, um, on the left side, you see the reference, uh, or like a reference grid. On the right side, hand side, you see an optimized uh, schematical proposal by uh, using this diagonal shape of, uh, of turbine positioning, 
we we move two turbines more into the free stream out of the wake regions uh reducing the um the power drop for those two and also increasing the actual spacing of um of the remain turbine remaining in the wake um um increasing the actual spacing by uh um, to twice the size so now let's have a look this is uh, this was one part regarding the layout optimization now let's have a look uh on the on the yaw um uh, on, the, on the yaw angle so what i've i've uh, done here i try to turn one turbine in this uh, in this wind turbine cluster and uh, try to find out if if yawing this turbine could anyhow influence the power output of the plant positively by yawing this turbine plus minus 20 degree there was no positive effect on the total plant power achieved and uh, this leads us to the assumption um, for now that for this case as displayed right now um, a yaw steering is not really feasible not not really feasible since the losses of the um, of the yacht turbine are higher than the gain of the um, of the downstream turbines by steering the wake out. But what about the case like that? If you have a inclined inflow um, in the wind farm, since we have many different wind directions, uh, here you see the wind turbines are not yacht; they are just uh, they are just uh, facing the wind um, since the inflow. Uh, wind direction is uh, is inclined here uh, so for for uh, a case like that it would be probably easier to steer the wake region out of a downstream rotor so let's have a look on that later and keep that in mind for now now this is the most uh, <laughs> the most colorful part of the presentation now we're talking about optimization I want to note at this point that there are two optimizations that I conducted two different optimizations which are not connected to each other. The first part is a layout optimization with fixed yaw angles. All the turbines are turned fully into the wind with yaw angles of zero, while the turbines' positions are um, the degrees of freedom for the optimization problem. The second optimization I'm going to talk about afterwards is the yaw optimization where the turbine have a fixed turbine positioning with a reference grid um, as as you've seen with hornstrip one and the yaw angles are the degree of freedom of this system so let's talk about the layout of optimization now i want to give you a first uh, little overview um, since this tool is implemented in MATLAB, I use the gradient-based extreme value search function fmincon. For those who've been using um, MATLAB, uh, they probably know it. The reference layout on ambient data I used are displayed on the slide, and the optimization is carried out for all three main wind directions displayed in this uh, in, in this little uh, scheme. Uh, though, uh, due to time time reasons, I will show you the optimization of uh, the optimal positions for only one wind direction. Now we need to also define the position, uh, the, the position boundaries of each turbine. The green dots indicate the, the, the turbine's position, and we um, I put some boundaries around them so the turbines can move within those areas in order to, for them to prevent uh, unphysical or um, unsafe placement uh, of the turbines. So here you can see the results. Um, the first picture on the left hand side shows the schematic uh, schematic positioning. Um, the green dots indicate the reference grid, the blue points, um, the optimized position positioning of the turbines. On the right hand side, you see the velocity distribution. It is clearly vis visible that you have a diagonal alignment of the turbines as discussed before after the parameter study in, with relation to the inflow. It also might, for some of you, look a little bit wild. So let's zoom in on a part of the wind farm. Here you see clearly that the six turbines displayed are aligned diagonally with respect to the inflow, which is from left to right. And what we can also see, um, looking at the x, x axis, we see that the, uh, the position in the wind farm is quite far downstream within the wind farm. And we see that the turbines are shifted and moved to the back side of the boundaries they, they, of the areas they could move in. This is in order to increase the 
um, increase the actual spacing to the upstream upstream turbines and, and thus increase the power output of the plant. What does that mean in, uh, in numbers? Uh, here you can see a little bar plot for this one optimized position, which was optimized for this one uh, wind direction of alpha uh, 270 degrees. You see very huge increases in performance for, for three different uh, wind directions. On the one hand, on the other hand, you still see a visible depend dependence on wind direction on the wind direction alpha. So the wind direction alpha needs to be included into further optimizations as a factor and also as a um, um, as a as a fact um, as a degree of freedom and also as a factor um, for finding the one optimal um, optimal layout uh, for all uh, um, for a wind farm in general. Now that we talked about the layout optimization, let's uh, let's have a look at the yaw optimization. Here again, the positions are fixed, and the yaw uh, and the yaw angles, so the uh, rotors angles, are uh, the degrees of freedom. A little retrospect to the uh, parameter study: the wake steering has um, maybe a potential for off main wind directions, not for the main wind directions. A layout is used as um, as discussed before, and an inclined inflow of delta alpha five degrees is used in this case. The results show, as you can see here again, a, a velocity distribution of the wind farm, and for this inclined inflow of five uh, five degrees inclined to the uh, main wind direction, we see that the the yaw angles pointed out here for one row um, in detail. You see that the first turbine is yawed, um, yawed the most in order to steer the wake out the most um, out of the downstream turbine's rotors. The last turbine is facing the wind since its wake not, is not affecting the power of the plant anymore at all. What we can see there is a clear power increase of up to 6.3% for this case. For this steady case, um, by yaw uh, by yaw steering the wakes. And consideration of the wind direction here is again absolutely necessary. So here again, the um, the wind direction needs to be included as a big factor. Um, I want to point out at this point the structural mechanics are not considered at all um, uh, within this model. So turbine loads um, due to um, yaw steering and also uh, facing you un uniform inflow need to be um, added in future work or uh, at least considered and looked at. Now let me conclude and give you a little insight in what is going what is ongoing work of my project right now. Um, so far I've developed an analytical computation tool in MATLAB using the wake model um, of Kian and Ishihara as they proposed it in 2018. The validation so far already shows uh, quite good agreement though it uh, with, with the uh, validation data from uh, Hornsurf one though the potential for expansion of the model is quite clear. So, so far, um, I already uh, made the tool um, more computationally fast by increasing the computation speed uh, by, six, uh, by a factor of 60. Then the superposition of those wakes is a very huge uh, thing discussed in research, uh, research on and on. So far, I've been using a linear superposition. By, by now, I'm using the momentum conserving superposition, which is increasing the computation speed, of course, but uh, shows well way better agreement uh, with, the, with the validation data than the um, model as it was before. And last but not least, um, there is a, a effect called wake meandering, it's the movement of the wake. Uh, downstream of the turbine due to large atmospheric eddies and vortices and due to uh, and this effect is of course uh, time dependent since my model here is uh, working on a steady state um, analytical modeling um, um, I'm working right now on implementing a statistical wake mandarin model in order to account for this time um, time dependent effect by time averaging the velocity, um, uh, the, the velocity deficit, or the, this effect of wake meandering on the wake, wake velocity. 
With respect to the optimization problem, um, the yield increase through layout optimization shows a very high potential and uh, is worth on further investigating. Yaw angle control is also in interesting, especially when operating off main wind directions. There are still a lot of factors to include and factors which are not, uh, um, not, uh, not included yet. One of them is definitely the wind direction. The wind direction is something I'm, uh, uh, I'm working on right now as well to include it uh, into the optimization structure uh, and to, uh, to account for that, uh, for finding the optimal solutions. On the other hand, there is the turbine, turbine loads and uh, um, uh, structural mechanics, uh, which are also investigated widely already in the research and uh, should be integrated here as well. And last but not least, maintenance and costs. Um, it needs to be uh, uh, it needs it needs to be profitable also to to operate and build a farm, and uh, so there uh, can be a uh, economical model included into this model in future work. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, um, joining my talk, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to your questions.